Because the big thing is, and I've had this conversation with many people, is how does one become successful? How does one become successful? Because you're always hearing this story about that guy or that chick, and you just hear the aftermath. You don't hear about the beginning, the origin. You don't hear any of that stuff. One of the things that helps me is being a lifelong reader. As a kid, I read all these stories, read a lot of things about history, and frequently, when you do the research, there's always more on the other side. There's always more. Well, what we're going to do this year is have massive effort across the board. I'm excited, yes. I know that was a little mercurial, but uh, yeah, that's what it's going to be because I look back at what I deem success and usually there was a lot of front loading because the thing is I've been a writer since maybe 97 and it actually started off as journaling because of some issues I had. I had a lot of issues, I had a lot of anger, I was pissed off, I was poor, I was yeah, at that point homeless for a minute. 98 98, 97, 98, 99 were some really ugly years for me. And I would write and I would create stuff. And one of the things that I learned from that process is you have to kind of change your perspective on what is work and what is fun. I would spend hours writing stuff. And I was really, really bad about being... And I know it's going to sound strange because I'm not like that anymore, but I was a perfectionist. And I wrote everything out in longhand. And then if I messed up on the fifth sentence, I ball up the paper and throw it across the room. That was a lot of the paper in the corner across the room. So with that, as I reflect and look at those memories, there was a lot of effort that went into it for a long time. And the thing is, I got this letter from a guy that just joined the Hustler Mindset. He's put out some massive effort to get to a certain level, and he's going to keep going. He's going to keep going because the thing is, you have to do something to become something. One of the reasons I created Sparta, one of the reasons that I'm making the moves and I'm making the moves on YouTube is, People have to have that inner, I want to do something different. I want to do something better. I can give you the best information in the world. I can put the best products in front of you. And until you get that inner drive, nothing's going to happen. And that's the thing that I've been banging my head up against for three years. That's the reason I had some of these crazy offers. Because I thought, if only I made it easier for them. If I only if I made it better. If only I made it cheaper. If only I gave it away for free. And none of it worked. But interestingly enough, when I charged a lot of money for my products, those people were successful. Eight times out of ten. And it's about value. And it's about what you think something is worth. Strange thing that I've noticed about car collectors. And if you know any, you, you already know this, but you've never thought about it. With car collectors, the most valuable car in the collection, they never drive. And if they drive it, they will not drive it on a rainy day. And if they get caught in the rain, they're going to take it to a place and have the undercarriage steam cleaned. Most valuable car, best kept car, and they baby it and they cherish it. Then another car, which probably is mechanically better, which is probably way safer in terms of airbags and collision zones, they can jump in that sucker and just go all day long because there's more value on that other car, which is inherent from the collector more so than just the car itself. The car is just metal. It's rubber. It's, it's just stuff. 
That's all it is. Just stuff. We as humans give these things value. That's why gold has value. That's why di diamonds are not rare. Diamonds are not rare at all. But we think they are and we make them more valuable based on our perspective. So where I'm going with this is we are going to do a lot of perspective building. Because if you work out and you've been in the gym for six months and you've had progressive weight training, you should be lifting more. In the beginning, that 50 pounds on that particular exercise was really heavy. Now, you are almost warming up with it. That's called progression. So your, your perspective has shifted. Not only have your muscles become stronger, but your perspective has shifted. And that's what, the, what I want to do this year is shift perspectives because I thought in 2009, when I wrote my first book, I was killing it. I was working 8, 12 hours a day. I was writing. I was trying to put together stuff. I was doing all this research. And I thought it was so much because I had nothing to compare it to. What I did in 2009, I can do in a week now. What took me three, four months, I can do that in a week now. And it's because you keep pushing and you keep pushing and you keep pushing. I make a lot of mistakes. I've become... At a problem, at a, at a spot in my life where I'm not afraid to fail. I'm not afraid to look foolish. I'm not afraid to have someone go, ah, you messed up again, man. Don't care. Because it doesn't feel good when you fail. It doesn't feel good when people create a whole internet forum for you talking bad stuff about you. I went in that form and lost my mind because there was some racism in there. And I wouldn't change the thing. I would still do what I did because I, I had to get it off my chest. The same person in the same place started again. But at this juncture, they're doing it a little differently. They're more respectful. They're not saying those crazy things. And I'm going to opt out. But... This is what I'm trying to get to you. Even when you mess up and even when people are talking bad stuff about you, for some reason, if you keep moving, regardless of all the, the arrows, the rocks, the bullets, you actually convert people who hate you into admirers. Because what's really going on, do that whenever they put that up there, it was all folk, you know, jokes and it was fun. But the thing is, I never stopped moving. I never stop moving with all the mistakes, with all the screw ups. I never stop moving because I don't know if I've ever said this, but I'll tell you the story of Gerber Alley. It was really strange. I used to work at a hospital by the name of Scottish Rite. It's merged with Emory. It's Atlanta Healthcare now. It's a pediatric hospital. We was there about a year, and the hospital was upgrading their computer system and they brought in this company by the name of Gerber Alley we had this one system it worked for us it did things but see once again it's about perspective because it worked for us but people at the top level were having a lot of issues because they were not gathering the data that they needed it wasn't happening as fast it just wasn't working the way that it should have worked and that's the reason they spent maybe 200 grand on this new system I don't know the full figure, but I know it was well in the six figures. Well, the system was buggy as all get out. Every freaking day we had issues. I was just like people were pulling out their hair. Folks were like threatening to quit because it's a hospital. You can't just say, okay, we have an issue, we'll deal with that in the morning. No, it was about patient care. Things had to be corrected or dealt with, or you had to use a backup system. And if you used a backup system, that meant double records, because at some point you're going to have to import that data into the new system. So a lot, a lot of frustration all over the hospital. People losing their minds. Folks are saying bad stuff about Gerber Alley. 
the reps are there, the techs are there, and six weeks later, it's smoothed out. And I was out back one day, just taking a break, and this new person comes in. And he's like, yeah, this Skirt Rally stuff's the best thing ever. I was like, what? He's like, yeah, you know, compared to where I used to work, we, that thing was garbage. And I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. I was just sitting there like, because, you know, the, the, the thing would have been like, well, if you had been here doing all, and it's like, that didn't really matter because 